Food is fuel. You get picky about what you put in the tank, your engine is going to die. Everyone has always heard how some foods are good for you and some are bad. However, not every commonly held conception is actually true. Here are the top 10 famous food myths busted by science. Oh, I have got to teach you about food. You need eight glasses of water per day. Too much. Of course, we all know that water is necessary for survival. In the summer months, when it's easy to get dehydrated, it's especially important that we drink enough water and get our daily fix of the blue stuff. However, did you know that the famous fact that we need eight glasses of water per day is untrue? This is actually a result of savvy marketing by bottled water companies looking to sell more bottles, which has resulted in more profit for them and a very detrimental impact on the environment. Environment. In truth, there is little to no difference between the quality of bottled water and tap water. Nothing. Nothing. So if you live in an area with access to clean drinking water, it would be wise to try to stick with the tap as much as you can to save money and help the environment. The truth about water intake is that if you're thirsty, you should drink some water. And if not, it's not necessary to drink more than you need. You also take in water from various foods throughout the day and other drinks like coffee or juice, which helps you stay hydrated. Although there are no real benefits to drinking extra water every day, there are no real adverse impacts either, except for maybe a few extra trips to the bathroom. We should eliminate salt completely from our diets. Salt is very bad luck. Here's something you might be salty about. Salt gets a bad rap, and we're often told to minimize or cut it out completely when it comes to our meals in order to avoid the risk of heart disease and high blood pressure. Despite this, a study conducted by MDPI concluded that a moderate sodium intake of around 5 grams per day would be optimal for the majority of people. Moderation is key, and we should watch how much salt we consume, but that doesn't mean we must cut it out completely. Salt. Yes. We actually need to consume sodium in order to regulate blood pressure and control nerves and muscles properly. But it's still key that we take in the correct amount. Here's a bonus myth for you. Sea salt isn't any better for you than regular salt. They both contain the same amount of sodium, which is approximately 40%. Foods to look out for in terms of high sodium levels include processed foods like processed meats and bread. Using fresh herbs, spices, oils, and citrus are all additional ways to enhance your food's flavor profile and contribute to tasty and healthy recipes. Eating fresh foods, fish, and any foods with reduced or low salt content are all good ways to lower your sodium intake without eliminating it from your diet completely. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Eggs have high cholesterol level. Eggs, 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 eggs. No matter how you like them, scrambled, boiled, in an omelet, or sunny side up, eggs are a classic breakfast food for many. Did you know that the common held belief that eggs have considerably high levels of cholesterol is actually misleading? For years, it was publicly advised to only consume two eggs per week. Everybody got that? In recent years, however, it was discovered that eggs had no connection to high cholesterol levels, and there is no limit to the recommended amount of eggs per week. Eggs are, in fact, one of the most nutrient-rich foods you can eat, so you can keep eating them at breakfast to your heart's content. For those in a rush each morning, scrambled eggs are the way to go for their quick prep time and ease of preparation. In addition, there are a few more common myths about eggs. Brown eggs are not healthier than white eggs, and the only difference is that brown eggs tend to be on the larger side. For this reason, brown eggs tend to be a bit pricier in stores, but there's no real downside to either brown or white eggs. And no, brown eggs don't come from just brown chickens. Carrots will give you perfect vision. I can see. What's up, Doc? One of the most popular factoids parents have repeated about food throughout the years is that carrots give us impeccable vision. Some people even claimed that carrots gave people the ability to see in the dark. Where the hell can I get eyes like that? 
The truth, sadly, is not quite as exciting as that. The popularity of this myth stemmed from a World War II propaganda campaign in the UK, when a character called Dr. Carrot was created to promote the consumption of carrots when more scarce vegetables were unavailable due to the war. They were touted as being rich in vitamins and improving eyesight at night. The Dig for Victory campaign worked, as carrots were a worthy substitute for other vegetables, and things like sugar used to make jams and marmalade. In reality, carrots contain beta-carotene, which the body then converts into vitamin A, which helps with eyesight. Your vision can be heavily impacted by a lack of vitamin A, including night blindness. The best way to reverse this is actually vitamin A supplements, which will restore your vision much more quickly and accurately than carrots. There's one myth about carrots, however, that is a little bit true. According to a 2013 study, eating an excessive amount of carrots can actually give your skin an orange hue. Everything in moderation is the key. I'll keep that in mind. Carb myths. Another one of the most common food facts that is repeated constantly is that we should avoid carbs like bread, pasta, potatoes, and baked goods at all costs. At all costs. The opposite myth that's out there saying that we should base our diet on carbs and starch is also inaccurate. The truth is not to cut out carbs completely, but to focus on certain types of carbs, namely whole grains. Studies find that a higher intake of refined grains increases the risk of heart disease, and that those who eat whole grain bread have a 20 to 30 percent lower chance of heart disease as well. This higher fiber content is key to heart health and is something you should keep in mind when choosing which bread to use for your sandwiches. Fiber keeps you energized and ready to take on whatever challenge comes your way. My blood sugar is real low. In addition, not all carbs contain gluten, so if your diet prohibits it, there are still many options for you to eat that are gluten-free. At the end of the day, carbs are another form of fuel that your body turns into sugar and uses for energy to complete tasks each day, like all of the other things that you eat in a day. Like with all foods, the key thing to remember is to maintain a balanced diet. This way, you can enjoy your favorite treats while still maintaining a healthy lifestyle. It takes seven years to digest chewing gum. Who's chewing gum? Everyone has had the experience of chewing a piece of their favorite gum and accidentally swallowing it. According to legend, that's seven years in your stomach for that gum. The myths have persisted in popular culture since the 19th century. However, like many of the myths on this list, the truth is that this isn't so simple. Like most foods, chewing gum takes approximately 30 to 120 minutes to pass after eating. Gum does not, in fact, stick to your stomach and linger in your body for years, but it follows the same digestive tract that all food does. Many gastroenterologists will tell you that they have never seen a wad of gum just lying around in the stomach. So swallowing gum isn't harmful, and you won't have to worry about turning into a giant blueberry like in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory either. One thing to watch out for, though, is the artificial sweeteners in sugar-free gum. They can result in nausea, diarrhea, and headaches when chewed in large amounts. Regardless, you should be able to enjoy your favorite chewing gum without any fears of swallowing it. For many people, chewing gum can be beneficial in boosting their attention span and ability to focus on tasks and keep them alert for longer. Just don't stick it under tables and desks. That's just rude. Disgusting. Frozen isn't as healthy as fresh fruit and vegetables. I only eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Brr, the frozen food aisle, home to our next myth. Everyone wants to have fresh food whenever possible, including fruits and vegetables. As a result of this, it's often been repeated as a fact that fresh fruits and vegetables are much more healthy than frozen ones. Fresh, fresh. However, this is another food myth that has been busted. The truth is that fruits and vegetables are just as healthy whichever way you buy them. Frozen fruits and vegetables are harvested at the peak of their ripeness and frozen to secure the nutrients and preserved for the consumer. With the hustle and bustle of modern life, many find it easier to make frozen vegetables with lunch or dinner instead of fresh. Additionally, frozen fruits and veggies are often much cheaper than their fresh counterparts and last a considerably longer amount of time as well, lasting over a year, while fresh fruits and veggies tend to only last a few days to a week. That's not enough. 
It's still vital to read the nutrition facts and ingredients when buying frozen fruits and veggies, as some of them contain additives and preservatives. So look for frozen fruits and vegetables that contain only the fruits and vegetables themselves. Frozen fruits and vegetables can be a considerable money saver, last for ages, and retain their nutrients. With the prices of everything seemingly always on the rise, frozen fruits and vegetables are a great option for everyone looking to save a couple of bucks. Not bad. Eating at night causes weight gain. We've all been there before. It's late at night, you get a craving and venture into the kitchen for a midnight snack of your choice. We've also all heard that eating at night is detrimental to your health and can cause you to gain more weight than eating at other times in the day. The truth is that it doesn't matter when you eat at all. It's about the quality of the calories you take in and how many calories you burn with physical activities. The British Medical Journal looked at several studies and concluded that there is no definite link between when eating late at night and weight gain. The American Dietetic Association agreed with this assessment as well, so the Americans and the Brits agree that this myth is busted. This myth likely comes from the fact that it can be easier to overeat late at night when cravings, stress, and boredom often kick in for many people. Eat the food. If you regulate your portions and ensure that you aren't overeating, those late-night snacks should be alright to continue munching. Going for healthier snacks like fruit or nuts could also help if you're worried about eating too much after a certain time. At the end of the day, though, your body processes food the same way no matter what time it is, and we all need some shredded cheese at 3 a.m. from time to time. Stress eating! This is really good! Turkey makes you sleepy. You're the pardon, turkey. I'm tired now. Another myth that you've likely heard at every family holiday gathering is that turkey makes us sleepy, and it's the tryptophan that does it. The truth is, once again, far from that. Holiday dinners include an abundance of food and drink, and paired with being in the autumn and winter naturally leave many of us drowsy. But it's not specifically the turkey that does it. While turkey does contain tryptophan, which helps with getting good sleep, it only contains small amounts of it. Studies show that people who take 5 gram supplements of tryptophan have improvements in their sleep, while two slices of turkey only contain about 410 milligrams in comparison, not remotely enough to take a effect. Not even close. Many other common foods contain tryptophan as well, including milk, cheese, chicken, beef, and nuts. As previously stated, the holidays falling in the late autumn and early winter also contribute to this, as it gets darker outside much quicker, leading to many people growing tired quickly after dinner. So that sleepy feeling you get at holiday dinner isn't from the turkey, but a mix of different foods paired with the time of year. To combat this holiday-induced sleepiness, you can try to eat slowly, eat smaller portions, watch your alcohol intake, and take a walk after dinner. This way you can avoid that post-dinner crash and stay awake and alert. So, uh, what should we do? Should we start setting up? We should all follow the same diet guidelines. Okay, follow me. Do the same moves. We are constantly bombarded on social media and television by the latest diet trends and fads on a regular basis that claim that they are the best diet to follow or this diet will change your life. The truth, however, is very far from this. Each person is unique and will react to every diet and type of food differently. According to Science Focus, a 2020 study found that when given identical meals to 1,000 people, each of their blood, metabolic, and inflammation responses were different. Even identical twins had different responses. Not even close. A professor at King's College in London who completed a similar study found that how you respond to sugar might be very different to how you respond to fat, and there are also variations depending on the time of day. Ultimately, there's no one magical diet or set of guidelines to follow. The best thing you can do is try different foods, meals, and strategies, and see how your own body reacts, rather than taking the advice from a wannabe influencer or guru. This way, you can truly find what works for you and craft your diet around what makes you feel happy and healthy. Stick around, leave us a comment, and check out another great video. Just tap or click. Thanks for watching.